had the privilege of listening to the book Up From Slavery. It's the autobiography of Booker T. Washington. Wanted to go through a couple little thoughts that I had uh, after listening to that book. Um, he really grabs your attention. At the beginning of the book, he uh, was a public speaker and uh, did, a, did a really good job writing the book, talking about um, the hardships that he endured as a young man. He was born, he wasn't sure exactly what year, but um, 1858 approximately. And so um, he was a young man during the time of the Civil War and uh, time afterwards. And it, it uh, he, he believes that uh, the measure of a man or the greatness of the man is not, is not just what he achieves, but from where he starts to where, what he achieves. And so um, a big principle, he seems to talk about it. He, he says he never got discouraged. And you know, he talks about some really discouraging things. And um, you know, he starts as a, uh, as a slave and then ends as uh, someone who has a relationship with uh, Dale Carnegie and uh, presidents. McKinley came to his uh, school and the, in, in essence, uh, indeed, He's, he's pointing out the fact that he was a great man, but he, um, he doesn't, doesn't say it that way. And literally, I, I didn't think about that until I'd finished the book for a couple of days. So um, never get discouraged. So he, as a young man, one of his jobs was to take, so this is during the Civil War, he's still a slave. So I was saying he was about Crosby's age, six years old or younger. He, he's supposed to take the horse and um, take the corn to the mill to get ground. And the, the difficulty was that it was three miles. Uh, he'd have to go through the woods. He was afraid he would meet an AWOL soldier and the soldier could, would cut his ears off. That's what he'd been told. And uh, the corn would fall off the horse or the mule. I'm not sure which animal it was. And uh, he would sit in the road and cry, waiting for someone to come and help him put it back on the horse because he was too little to do that. And he'd get beat when he got home because he was late because he got to the mill late and then had to wait at the mill and got home late. And uh, there, there's a, a spiritual lesson there for me. You know, sometimes I feel like I can't get done, you know, what I have in front of me, what's on my plate. but. I have a better master than than Booker did, and uh, and he knows where I am and what what my circumstances are, and he'll help me. They give me the help that I need. But but that's not the point of the book. That's that's Mike Mike there. So uh, he, he comes from being that little boy to to being the uh, the founder of the Tuskegee Institute, and uh, it's a, a big deal. So never get discouraged. That seems to be the big point, and. Uh, so he has a 300 mile walk when slavery ends and he has to uh, go 300 miles to go to Malden, West Virginia and his stepfather, so his, his father is apparently a white man, doesn't know who he is, but because he was born to a slave woman, he, he was born into slavery. His stepfather has gotten a job in the salt furnaces. That's interesting, at that industry I apparently uh, there were salt licks there and salt uh, salt water that would that would come up there near Charleston and uh, so the salt furnaces were producing salt and then they would work in the coal mine to produce the heat for the salt furnaces and so his stepfather worked there he went down there and immediately started doing that uh, 300 mile walk to go from Virginia where he was to Malden West Virginia or Charleston West Virginia and uh, start working himself, eight, nine, ten years old, in the salt furnace, salt furnaces, and the coal mine. And uh, he has this great desire to read. He sees people who can read as being just uh, the just uh, people that had really achieved something in life. And so he really wants to read. He really wants to be educated. And uh, he can't go to school because he has to work. And so. He uh, finally gets into night school, goes to night school, and they all have a hat. They wear a hat when they go to school. And his mother makes him a hat rather than uh, borrowing money 
to get a new hat from the store. She makes him a hat and it's kind of like uh, Dolly Parton's coat of many colors, how she makes the hat. And he remembers that as a lesson, not to go into debt, but to, um, but to uh, do with what they had. And so uh, he really wants to go to school during the day full time. And the only way that he can do that, he's allowed to do that, is to go and work in the salt mine for four or five hours in the morning and then go to school and then work two hours after school. And so he has to work until 9 a.m. School starts at 9 a.m. and then he has to get there. So he would, uh, he would take the clock at 8.30 and move it to nine o'clock. Again, you know, and as a uh, eight, nine year old boy. And then he'd go to school and get there on time until the boss figured out something was going on and they locked up the clock. And so uh, he didn't get discouraged about the fact he couldn't get to school on time. He just uh, cheated. And, and he said that it was better to just talk about those things up front. So he, uh, his name, he was in class and they asked what his full name was. And so right on the spot, he only knew his name as Booker. So he, he came up with the name Washington and that was his name from then on. He just made that up for school. So uh, he, would, he would be in the coal mine and his light would go out. And so he'd have to wander around to find someone that would, they could light his light and get back out of the coal mine. And uh, just pitch blackness, walking a mile into the earth and getting lost in the darkness. It's just an amazing story. But one day he's down there and he hears someone talking about a school in Hampton where, where uh, he could learn, uh, he could learn, be educated. And um, it's, it's a, where they're gonna teach him, teach him uh, practical skills as well. And uh, he gets excited about the chance to do that. He saves up his money. His brother sends him with some money. His brother had helped him when he was a slave as well by, by wearing in the, uh, the painful shirts that they would get, a flax shirt. His big brother wore that for him when he was, when he was, uh, when he was real little and wore it in for him. And so his big brother saves up a little bit of money and uh, he goes to school and, and again, never get discouraged. He said he, he never got discouraged. So he's on his way. Shortly after he leaves, he realizes he doesn't have enough money to get the 400 miles to Hampton. And so he ends up uh, having to sleep under a wooden sidewalk and uh, unload ships in, in uh, Richmond and make his way there. He didn't realize that the color of his skin made a difference and so um, he didn't have any money to stay at the hotel at, at the stop, but uh, he was sent out of the room anyway before he ever, uh, before they ever talked about money because of the color of his skin. But uh, he's able to show up at school, he's got 50 cents, and, uh, and then they have to, then they're not sure if they're gonna let him into the school. And they give him a classroom to clean, and uh, he had worked for a lady back in Malden that had taught him how to uh, how to clean, and he did a good enough job cleaning that class that he became the school janitor, and that was his uh, his job that he worked his way through school, and so um, he talks about at one point his mother stole a chicken when they were when they were on the plantation, and he didn't see that as stealing. It was just the situation they found themselves in. She stole a chicken in the middle of the night, woke them up, and fed it to them because. They just eat what they could when they could. So never get discouraged. And then another big principle that he seems to talk about, there's this man, General Armstrong, and he is at the Hamptons and he's running this school and he is a great man, according to Booker, because he doesn't hate, he doesn't, uh, he, he loves the, uh, the, sl the former slaves of the South, and he even loves the former uh, soldiers in the Confederacy, even though he fought for the North. And so uh, he, this principle is that we find our joy in helping others. We find our joy in, in bringing other people up and making them happy. And so um, part of this mission here, he, he, he sees his role is trying to get the Southern whites and the 
blacks to get along in the South. And so um, he talks about how he knew slaves that would protect the uh, white women of the plantation while the, uh, while the white men were away with their lives. That um, he knew, sla knew a slave that had arranged to pay 400 or $500 for his ability to go to Ohio and work and kind of bought his own freedom. And after the Civil War, he, he paid off that debt so that he could sleep at night. Um, he knew that they mourned over the young men that had left the plantation, the white men that were that were hurt, and that uh, that there were there were slaves that loved the white people that they had been with. So, um, at one point, he writes a letter talking about the state of the black ministers in the churches shortly after the Civil War, and he he says that they're uneducated, unlearned, and they're, it's a it's a bad state that they're in. And that because they'd just been liberated from slavery, it was it was as you would expect it to be. They had no time to be educated. And he took abuse for that for a long time. And and uh, but it came back to be something that he was lauded for for telling the truth. And they actually had some they trained ministers at the Tuskegee Institute uh, for for smaller churches as well or country churches, I think, as they said it. So. Um, he talks about managing his day and his work. How that, how that uh, he would he, he says to uh, plan your work and don't let your work uh, take control of you. And he he talks about public speaking and how he always enjoyed talking to people afterwards. But there's always this one guy, this one crank. You got to watch for the crank, and he's going to tell you how to fix uh, the poverty of the black people in the South with one quick fix and and um, just a uh, something that he doesn't look forward to. But um, really interesting, interesting book and a, a good perspective, uh, humbling, and uh, definitely something I'm glad I spent my time on.